The final question we want to ask in our series on personal Bible study is, where do we go from here? I'm sure at this stage you have a lot of intentions, a lot of hopes, but ultimately these will boil down to what do you do about it? So I want to give you three practical steps that will help you to implement what we have been seeking to learn in these sessions together. First of all, make a decision to establish a regular Bible study program. I made that study in the second year of my seminary career. Lewis Perry Chafer, the founder of the school I now teach in, said, don't study for a course, study for a lifetime of ministry. And I've never recovered from that. You've got to make a decision. It's a choice because your objectives always determine your outcomes. You achieve that for which you aim. And what you've got to do is to set some time, more importantly, to keep it. And by the way, don't take off too big a bite to begin. I lead a person to Christ and I say, look, would you give me 15 minutes a day to study the Word of God and to pray? Well, they've never done this before in their life. But I have a lot of people who someone motivates them to study the Bible and they come up with this humongous program. Oh man, I'm going to spend an hour a day. And after two days, it's gone. There's a second suggestion I would like to give you. And that is come up with a personal plan. If you decide you're going to spend a half hour a day, then how are you going to spend it? And what I would encourage you to do is to spend say 20 minutes in, per, in Bible study, spend 10 minutes in prayer, and keep it regularly. It's better to have a shorter amount of time for Bible study and to be consistent in it. And if you miss it, you know, it's not losing your salvation, provided it's your purpose. So if I miss a day, I say, sorry, Lord, I'm back in to your word tomorrow. And you pick up to eventually you come to the place, quite frankly, where not to have it is more of a penalty to you than it is to the entire process. Your salvation does not depend on it, but your sanctification does. You need time for prayer and Bible study. And I can tell you, if it's a question of discipline, then if you do it once, you can do it twice. If you do it twice, you can do it three times. If you do it three times, you can form a habit out of it. And once you form a habit, then you got something permanent, something that's going to stay with you the rest of your life. There's a third suggestion I want to give, and that is, why don't you form a Bible study group? Why don't you find a collection of soul brothers or sisters who really have developed the same passion and the same skills that you are in the process of developing? Because when you get together as a team, you motivate each other. You keep each other accountable. One of the great weaknesses in many Christian lives is that they have no accountability. Nobody who loves them and who loves them so much that they're willing to ask the hard questions. And I can remember particularly in earlier years of my Christian life, somebody asking me, Hendrix, are you in the Word? And I was forced to say, no, I'm not. And I was ashamed of it. But the encouragement they gave said, I'll be glad to meet with you and we'll do it together so that we keep it consistent. One of the things that you need to do if you get a group is to evaluate the process. And I have three questions I ask in any evaluation I do. Number one, what are the strengths of what I'm doing? And there are usually many. What are the weaknesses? Second and third, 
What do I need to change on the basis of my evaluation? It might be the use of Bible study with your wife, with a small group down at the church, a group of friends or other pastors. But whatever the constituency of the group, you have a group of individuals who are passionate about studying the Word with a view to being changed by the Word. I cannot think of anything I would encourage you more than not only to get into the Word, but also to get the Word into you. And watch the transformation of your life by the power of the Spirit through the powerful Word of God.